Tyson. Uh, I'm just gonna, um, today I'm just gonna present our low flow vapor monitoring system, okay. which is used to collect volatile organic compound samples for analysis, for laboratory analysis. Okay. Um, and so we're, you know, uh, let me just, I'll give you just a little bit of background about me. I'm one of the owners of 212 Environmental Products, and we formed the company in 2019. I am a consultant by trade. I've been doing vapor intrusion sampling for over 20 years. Um, really for a, a lot of um, old legacy refinery sites, so going into like these neighborhoods next to these huge massive refineries where there's, there's big releases and there's real vapor intrusion problems. Um, I've also worked at smaller facilities like mom and pop gas station sites and salted sites where there were dry cleaning and things like that. Um, and so, you know, we uh, developed our own line of vapor intrusion sampling products out of necessity because there aren't products available off the shelf. And so a lot of guys put stuff out of their garage to get sampling done. And that really creates this wide range of quality in terms of vapor samples. Um, because, and we'll get into this, uh, one of the key things when you're doing vapor sampling is you're, you're collecting samples from specific areas. So beneath the house, in the house. Um, you can also do outdoor air sampling, which I don't think is necessary for the market we're trying to target. But that's how you can decipher where, what the source of vapors is. So it's really imperative that that sample you're collecting represents the thing you're trying to sample. If you collect a sub slab sample and you've got a bunch of leaks in your sample train and you're really collecting an indoor air sample, it's not going to help you make that decision. And ultimately, one of the things that comes out of this um, is the potential to install mitigation systems, not just for radon, but also to address potential vapor intrusion issues. So the, you know, we, we saw an, an opportunity, not only from, from the vapor intrusion side in terms of environmental um, assessment and mitigation um, and remediation for these big release sites, but I also think there's an opportunity to move this into the home market. Um, as people are, are, are buying homes, if we're buying houses in urban environments where there's lots of industry around us and there is this potential for there to be contamination left in place from leaking tanks from an old gas station or dry cleaners. Well, ours is tips. Yes, um, sure. South Carolina had, is, was, I mean, used to have huge textile facilities all across South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's where I think we're starting to see a lot of it because on these old textile sites, yep. they're building residentially. Yeah, right? they are. And there's a lot of um, solvent use. There's solvent use in those facilities and the dyes, and there's a lot, there's a lot of problems there. Um, and one of the, I'm a retired nurse, actually a pediatric nurse, so oh, I was okay. a school nurse. But I started seeing clustering of kids with cancer. Yes. Um, significant numbers for the ratio of student to, to patient Absolutely. relationship. So that, that's one of the reasons that we, you know, I don't know if Aaron told me that. But no, we, we have, just had a really great conversation. Yeah. And said you're so I have an interest in that. Yes, I do too. So I mean, I do, I do human health risk assessment uh, as part of my consulting services offerings, and it's exactly looking at things like cancer clusters. I mean, estimating carcinogenic risk from exposure to chemical side. That be it. Tell me, I'm out of my mind. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a, it's a real. I really. But it's there. I really believe it's there. It is really there, and it's really there at a greater rate than people think, right. because they don't know. You can't see it. You can't smell it. But you can't you, taste it. Don't see but it. But you can't. You can't replace your air. Yeah. It's not, you know, you can bring in a different drinking water source and you can cover up soil contamination, but you cannot remove people's air source. We don't have, you know, that's just not reasonable, especially in a central scenario. So, you know, our, our vision is to really bring what we've learned from doing environmental consulting work um, into this industry where I think that there would be a lot of homeowners that would be interested in understanding their air quality. Doing vapor intrusion work doesn't just address whether there's a vapor intrusion issue from beneath the ground, you're also looking into your air quality. Because you've got to decide where is that source coming from. Is this a vapor issue from beneath the ground, or do I have an indoor air source that's causing this? Because if you put a mitigation system in somebody's house, just because there's an, ex uh, an indoor air problem, it's not necessarily going to fix the problem if it's not coming from beneath the house. And there's a lot of carpets, glues, paints, gasoline that people spray in the house. Things. Yeah, it's all, it's all over the it's place. Everywhere. And it really complicates the VI industry. I mean, that, that, you know, you hear, uh, you guys are going through these, and I don't know how much, you know, you're attending the VI sessions versus the radon, but background's a big problem for, for vapor intrusion. So it's really important that you make sure you're getting representative samples that um, you can start to tell that story with. And so, that, you know, that's, so we, we do have um, a whole line of vapor, in, um, vapor monitoring, vapor mitigation, 
um, equipment and things of that nature. Everything, our full product lines that, that we do about our products. So I'll let you visit that. We also have database capabilities. Um, a lot of the stuff we've developed for our need, but see the potential for our market. And so that's where we've kind of worn out. So um, really, you know, there's a lot of crossover between radon and vapor intrusion, right? We're both dealing with the, the migration of indoor air or contaminants in air into overlying structures, both from radon and from the vapor intrusion side. And so, uh, you know, in the case of vapor intrusion, you're looking at a lot of different sources, whether that's the old mom and pop gas station next door, could be the textile industry, and, and the old uh, um, dry cleaning facilities. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, the prescribed method by the EPA to dispose of dry cleaning um, solvent waste was to dump it on the ground. That's what they told people to do. Just dump it on the ground, it will volatilize, it will disappear. It didn't disappear, it went into the groundwater. And it doesn't degrade very, it doesn't go anywhere. It's very stable in, in the environment. So then you get these large plumes that are under people's homes and they don't know. If you come in to buy something, that infrastructure is long gone. But that problem's still there. And they don't raise it. No, and they don't know. I mean, you know, it's like, it's my industry to do that. I see it. I'm always looking for it. But if I didn't work in the industry, I wouldn't know about it either. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it's an education opportunity for the homeowners. It gives them another piece of information before they buy property, and it's another source of revenue, I think, for the right home industry. So, you know, it, it, I, I think that there's a real opportunity here. Um, part of the reason why I really got kind of inspired by this is I live in Colorado. There's a lot of natural gas, um, oil and gas development there. And there's a, a miles and miles and miles of transmission lines and old wells. They started doing work there in like the 1920s. And it wasn't properly abandoned and, and removed. So there's a lot of this stuff is open. Um, and so this was a, a fairly new community. Um, there was a, a well there by that had not been properly plugged and abandoned. It was leaking nothing out into the soil vapor. The um, homeowners went down into the basement to change out the water heater, exploded and killed. So, you know, and so you've got these short-term acute risks where you have an explosive potential as things like methane. And I was talking to a guy earlier um, that it was kind of an interesting conversation. One of the things that came out of that was he's like, well, you can smell natural gas in it. Not unless it's been processed. They add that chemical for you to smell it. If you're dealing with production, with the, with the development side, you can't smell methane. It's odorless and, 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 and colorless. You don't see it. That's why it killed and I yes, guess, yeah, and that's very key. Yeah, exactly. I hate to say it, I'm old, but I know exactly. Yeah, they used to have parakeets yes. and took them to the mines yep. because you could they not smell first. it. You couldn't. They died first, and you had the parakeet drop over. It's probably good up. Yes. Um, but so we're we're really we're targeting kind of what we see to be the swath of of um, potential environments. There's certainly specialty things like the textile industry that if you're going to work in that, we might want to work together to get the right analyst. But we, we've kind of, our, you know, we've teed um, with our knowledge about doing different intrusion, our connections with the analytical laboratories, and then our ability to do databasing. So we're providing the sample equipment, the analytical piece, and then all the way to reporting um, to, to kind of bundle this together as a one-stop shop to give, uh, I, and I think the right places to get radon and specialists involved in this because they're the ones that are on the ground doing the work. As an environmental consultant, I'm going in on behalf of, say, oil and gas client. I'm not going door to door. Um, that's, that's, it's not the same industry. And so it's an opportunity to educate the homeowner, to provide them with more information about the property that they're purchasing. Um, and it's another, like I said, it's another line of revenue. And it, there is a potential to increase you know, even mitigation system installation or to you know, kind of s substantiate that for both radon and VOCs because the same solution is going to work. So um, the, the system that we've come up with is you know, based on our 20 years of doing vapor sampling and just kind of refining our own stuff. Um, and so, you know, we, we I mean, when we first built this thing, it was like this big. And you'd have to call, you know, you're, I mean, we're in these old, a lot of houses were working in old 30s and 40s houses with, you know, non-code stairs, and uh, it was, me, and we were taking full tanks of helium down this, I mean, it was crazy. Um, so we really tried to bring that down to so it's, you know, portable and compatible and, and rugged so you can get in and out, and it collected thousands and thousands of samples off a single panel. So there is an investment cost to, to buy the equipment, but you're going to recoup that pretty quick um, if you're doing this on a regular basis. Uh, and so then, you know, like I said, this is a nuts and bolts. So the output of this is you and work. I'm going to show you the equipment. 
we do a little bit of hands on stuff so you can actually see what we're doing. But um, you collect the samples, you ship them. It's really rapid turnaround because you can't hold those paper samples in the, in the bags for very long. Um, and then the lab actually pumps that data back into our database, and we output a, a screening table and then a, a letter style report that you can then include in an inspection report. Um, and the, the report is going to summarize all the analytical data. It's hard to see it on the screen. Um, and then we're actually going to do a comparison to the US EPA indoor air and sub-slot residential screening values. Or if you're in a commercial property, we can use commercial industrial values because it's based on exposure. So if you're in a residential situation, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 70 years kind of a scenario. Commercial industrial is different. It's year over year, you're not in the building as much, so the screen values are higher. It's all based on exposure and risk. And it goes back to, to cancer risk or non-cancer, depending on the chemical. Um, we've targeted a, a couple of key compounds based on our experience. So we're doing VTEX. Um, which is benzene, apple benzene, zolumine, toluene, and xylene, which are kind of the risk drivers for petroleum sites. So the amount of cast stations, that's going to kind of give you an indicator. Um, and then TCE and PCE, which are your, your dry cleaning solvents, and then methane, which is that, that acute kind of explosion risk, right? So it's not so much of a health risk in terms of cancer causing, but you can have that if your house blow up. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's a, we can certainly um, tweak that list to match the needs of the chemicals. Yeah, absolutely. This is kind of our, the list that we think is kind of key for your, your day in, day out kind of stuff, but there's certainly environments where maybe a, a different list or more expansive list might be appropriate. And okay. uh, we also provide background values because the screen values are oftentimes lower than what you'd see occurring at just from people's day to day. Um, just like radon. I mean, you're going to have, exactly. you know, if your exposure, there's a certain amount of outdoor radon that you're exactly. really exposed to. So, and there's a certain amount of outdoor VOCs. I mean, for example, just to throw out some numbers, uh, ben the benzene screening value for the US EPA is 0.36 micrograms per meter cubed. It's like a PPB level concentration, okay? Parts per billion. In LA, outdoor air is 50. So you can't go into that assessment saying, oh, I gotta hit this screening value, because you've got to look at what that regional is actually there. You do, and it, it's really important when you're trying to splash this out. Does putting a mitigation system in make sense, or is it gonna, is it gonna improve your, your health? Or is that problem just a regional problem that you can't overcome, and it's not a vapor intrusion issue, it's an indoor air quality issue. All right, and then you gotta look at the different other avenues. Exactly, like and some of that might be air like, filtration, exactly, like carbon, disease, exactly, you know. Exactly. So, you know, there's a lot of, um, regulation and uh, guidance in the, in the environmental consulting world for collecting data samples. Um, there's a lot of people that are working pretty collaboratively to come up with you know, methods and systems to improve the data quality. Because one of the things that's really important is that you're making sure that that sample you're collecting is coming from the place you're collecting it from. And it's really easy to get leaks in your system. It's really easy to put a probe in that's not sealed properly and you're just getting a bunch of indoor air and you're like, well, this is an indoor air problem. When in fact, it was a self stop. Um, so it's a little bit of a different thing because I don't think that there's a lot of, I've done some radon, um, I, I saw a guy that was in the BI session talking about this too, that um, radon has become a bit of a tracer for vapor intrusion because it, it, it's naturally occurring. So a lot of sites will work out all those edges. So you're really trying to say, is this my client's problem or is it not? And, and so it's a little bit of a different um, uh, take in that sense. So people are using things like radon as a naturally occurring tracer to look at how vapors transport into the house, to use that as a line of evidence for evaluating the, the vapor concentrations. So you know, you're know you seeing radon getting into the house, what's the attenuation across the slab? Because not everything's making it in. So what does that look like on a site-by-site -site basis? Um, but these are kind of the key elements of collecting a uh, you know, solid sample. And so I just want to go through these as we kind of, we can collect a, a fake sample and just kind of walk through how this panel how this panel uh, achieves each of these elements. Now there's some things that we've cut out, and I'll tell you, um, in the vapor intrusion industry, you're gonna hear about tracer testing at the surface where you, know, you put a shroud over, and a lot of times you use helium, so you can use that as a tracer to check if you've got leaks, and then they actually analyze for helium back at the lab, and you can see if you have it. Exactly. So we're like with radar where they're doing soil testing before they build, it. build anything, they go out and set a test monitor yes. out there, cover it, see if the soils. Exactly. Yeah, you know, just, I mean, it doesn't give you but it tells you that there's it gives you a potential. Sense. Right. So it's, it's a checklist, right? 
it's a plus minus kind of thing. So um, we, we've cut out some of the steps because frankly, I, I view this as kind of a, a, a screening step. If somebody really has a vapor problem, they probably need a, a, a vapor intrusion specialist involved if it's extreme. At least a guide, like at the end of the day, you guys design and install medication systems. Um, it's not really any different from that perspective. We're doing the same thing. But there might be some you know, more chemical analysis that needs to happen or a better understanding of how, how that's happening and where it's coming from or you know, what's the signature. And then what things should we be looking for after the system is installed to make sure that that, that problem has been addressed. But you know, so we've, we've tried to kind of streamline this process, make it easy, package it, bundle it. And so it can be you know, incorporated into your day-to-day -day inspection. Um, with the idea that if there's a really big problem, it, it might need to, you know, not, not might need to bring a consultant that, that's done a lot of the eye work. But, um, so we've eliminated some things that I just don't think are, are necessary for the use of the purpose of, of what we're doing. Um, that if I was working at, say, a litigious site, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't go that route. But we also don't typically collect samples and tablet bags. We use cinema canisters, partly because you have water the whole time. So that's like a metal, almost looks like a basketball size. And it has a vacuum, you pull a sample and get it. You have about 30 days on the Tetler bags. Um, you only have about, about 48 hours. So they have to go to the lab and get analyzed. But it gives you a, it's, it's kind of the same, you know, it's a plus minus. But these are, this is really, um, at the same time, valid analytical. It's potential of a problem. So, you know, most homeowners that you're dealing with, unless you're doing commercial, most homeowners just want to know, do I have a problem or don't I have Exactly. I mean, you know, and then you're going to get the ones that, you know, if I do have a problem, I want to know exactly what it is, right. write it down, everything. And I do too, but, but I mean, just start with like, I'm giving this as a screening stuff. That's not to say that the data is in, is only screening level. Right. But it's, it, these are reputable analytical labs that are EPA approved labs. So it's not, um, the, the data is valid and it's real. Because we're reporting down to very low concentrations for some of these things. I mean, you're, you're down to these like a drop in the swimming pool kind of concentrations. So it's important that they're valid and good data. But it, it is, it is um, there are some things that you know you might see the eye presentation and they're like, well, why aren't we doing a banding tracer? Or why are, because we're trying to create a process that's reasonable for getting into these homes and having you know, people that are not the eye specialists, per se, but I think are, have the skills to do this, I, I, I think. So um, anyway, you know, the basic concept is that the, the samples are actually being collected in these bags. Um, this is called a tablet bag, commonly used in the air monitoring industry. And it's just an inner bag, so you've got VFCs are, are kind of sticky and actually kind of adhere to surfaces. So this it prevents some of that from happening, so you don't end up with like a really low concentration because everything's stuck on the surface of the bag. Well, it's like a radon, you know, the radon decay product. If you got a fan belt going, you know, it's going to start doing the plating. Yes. So your concentrations are going to go down. Yep. Um, and, and there's, a, there's a lot of similarities in terms of some of the issues that we're running into. Uh, and so, you know, I'm not going to go into the, the probe installation. The, the other thing that I um, forgot to mention is that we've actually created a series of training videos online that are available 24 7. So you can go and watch each step of this as many times as you want. Um, and, and just, you know, either as, a, as an initial training or a refresher, or, you know, having a problem out of the field. You can also just give us a call for running some kind of a weird, you know, stuff. But this is a kind of a mock up of what uh, a sub slot would look like, this being kind of a concrete here, but just so you can see the probe. Our actual probes um, are just a mesh screen, and then this is all swage lock fittings or compression fittings, quarter inch. Um, these are great for permanent and semi permanent applications, especially if you, you know, you're going to go back and do mitigation, you can use this as a monitoring point. Um, however, I, I would, I'll, I'll say, I think the vapor pen product that they have is a better application if you're going in and out because they, it's, you, you have to wait for 24 hours to be installed to the concrete set up to make sure you have a good seal. If you use the vapor pen products, they actually use a water dam to check their seal, and it's instant. And so you can be sampling the same. Like you put the probe in, you sample it, you're done. And that's going to be the way that this needs to happen, realistically. This is great if you're doing, you know, maybe a commercial building where it's going to be long term, or you're going to use these. Um, we actually use these probes for a prior mitigation solution. So we're able to reuse some of that stuff. But it, you might be better off to use a, a vapor pen if you're doing kind of a high vision. Um, so we just, uh, I watch the clock here. 11, 11. Oh, we don't have very much time at all. Um, anyway, so I'll just go, I'll just kind of explain this really quickly. Um, we are going to do a demonstration later. Sorry, we got kind of off on all the science. He's talking to get to the hands-on part. But this is actually.
actually a little knockout tank. There's a lot of moisture in the soil, and sometimes there's just plain old water. And like I was telling you, this is for vapor sampling, not for water sampling. You do not want water in these panels. You have to take them apart, blow them out, get them dry. Um, because there's rotanders and it's all air based. You can't, it can't have water in it. So a little knockout just to watch. If you get water in this, you shut that thing on and you know your sample. Um, and all these parts and pieces are available, um, you know, for salad. All this, this, these kinds of, this kind of stuff you can use and use and use. The, the piece that, you know, these bags are one line use. Um, and what we have you do is collect two sub slab and two in your other sample. And that way you have redundancy in case one of the bag pops or leaks or, or something happens at the lab, then you know, this is it. You don't have a chance to go back and do it twice, typically. It's a, it's a one-time deal. Um, and so then you, you, know, you fill your two bags in the sub slab, fill your two indoor, send it overnight box like this. We provide all the shipping labels, um, the QR codes, everything you put into our database system with your unique identifiers. So just a simple web-based form. And then you get those reports back tied to that, to that property. So it's all you know, streamlined and something that you can put into your system. Um, and then you know, this just connects right onto your probe. And you're able to go through each of these things with four minutes. Thank you. Um, seal testing is checking to see if your probe itself is solid. I'm not going to get into that. Shut-in testing is you just use this panel to apply a vacuum across all your tubing and see if it holds. And if you, know, if you don't have a leak, it will hold vacuum and you'll be able to see that in your gauge like it's solid and it's not moving. That way you know, because that, that's really one of the big problems is you hook this all up and you got a little bit of a leak right there. Well, air wants to come from the easiest place it possibly can. So you're mostly just going to get an ambient air sample if you've got a leak across that. So the first thing you want to do is kind of, you shut this, you're not pulling any vapor from here, you're just testing your, your panel to make sure you don't have leaks across that. Once you're confident that you do, you can open this up and then um, just collect your samples and you know really you can when you get good at this I mean it probably takes about 20 minutes to get your program you gotta make sure you're not gonna hit utilities work with the homeowner to understand where their train lines are and, and anything else like that and then you know you, you got purge sample do your checks maybe a half hour to get two bags um, so it's it's can be pretty quick once you get that system down um, and I apologize because I really wanted to get into this and we've run out of time. But um, we are going to do a hands-on demonstration later this afternoon if you want to stop by. I think it's like a three or two or something. Okay. Yeah. I'll just get yeah. it. But um, yeah. But I don't think it's listed as this. It's one of those like, it's one of the things that's just at our booth. I think that there's like stuff like that pops up on, on the Hoover app if you've got like sessions, sure. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Um, any, I, I can also just run through a demonstration, you know, right there. It's, it's really pretty I think cool. Mayor and I will probably come back. Yeah. I, so if you have any questions, let me know. We're, you know, we're right upstairs and um, definitely interested in talking about this. It is a new, it's kind of a new market, it's a new industry. But I do think that there, are, I mean, if you're buying a million dollar house, I think there's a potential in it. I think there's a potential in it. I think that's one of the reasons we're looking at uh, vapor intrusion is there's a potential market. Yes. For, you know, where are you from? North Carolina. Oh. We do a lot of the um, dry cleaners and stuff like that, and, but they do the testing and then they hire us to mitigate. So, so you so you're you're doing to... the vapor intrusion right now with the TCE portion yeah. of the yeah. And so you can, I mean, you could you know come in and offer that service to to if, if you're doing um, mitigation design for nearby homeowners and you know there's an issue. Um, it's a lot more widespread than you think. We want to thank you for coming down this morning. Yes. And please visit them in their booth for additional information. We're going to change out.